Legends, brought to you by Heathcliff Spencer Peters. If you have ever seen a UFO, you know it's impossible to forget. About 300 miles outside of Argentia, I saw a glow on the water. And if you haven't, you're about to. Because one of the most famous encounters with a flying saucer happened when Commander Graham Bethune was a young pilot stationed at Keflavik Air Base in Iceland. We watched this for a while, the lights went out, there was nothing on the water. Next thing we you may have heard of a UFO sighting in 1952 by Navy pilot named Graham Bethune. My name is Graham Bethune. I'm a retired Navy commander, pilot, had a top secret clearance. 50 years ago, February the 10th, 1951, I was flying from Keflavik, Iceland to Argentia, Newfoundland. It was at night, it was dark. About 300 miles outside of Argentia, I saw a glow on the water, like approaching the city at night. As we approached this glow, it turned to a monstrous circle of white lights on the water. We watched this for a while, the lights went out, there was nothing on the water. Next thing we saw was a yellow halo, small, much smaller than whatever it was launched from, and that was 15 miles away. Whew up to our altitude. Because of the tra trajectory, I disengaged the autopod, shoved the nose over to try to go under this thing. And at that time, I heard a noise underneath. I thought maybe it hit us. It was actually some of the crew members ducking and they collided and a couple of them were injured. Then it appeared over to the right and moved out slowly and flew with us. It was still not at our altitude, but we could see the shape of it. It had a dome. We could see the, we could see the coronal discharge. I went back aft, let the other pilot, Al Jones, take my seat to see what the passenger's reaction was. Came back to the cockpit, told him not to report anything, simply because what that the psychiatrist had said to me, maybe they would lock us up. So basically, the instruments in the cockpit, we had four or five failures in the area of magnetic compass, you know, the electromagnetic effect, in area of directional finders, and this type of thing. The craft was tracked by radar in excess of 1,800 miles an hour. It never did get to our altitude. We had 31 passengers, plus the psychiatrist and the crew members that all sighted this at, at different areas. When we landed at Argentia, Newfoundland, we were t interrogated by the Air Force, an excellent interrogation, Captain Paulson. When we landed at the Naval Air Test Center here at Patuxent River, we were required by Navy intelligence to make out individual reports. Out of the National Archives, I have the 18-page official Navy and Air Force report. I've made up a, a report to straighten out all the truth. There's a stack of books out there this high that have written all of this up. So the truth is here. I will testify under oath before Congress that everything that I have said is true. He was en route to Iceland when he saw an enormous object that at first thought was enemy aircraft. It turned out not to be an enemy aircraft. The UFO was 300 feet long and flying at medium altitude. It emitted a monstrous circle of white light on water that traveled 10,000 feet straight up in a fraction of a second. It happened in 1952, when he was a young pilot stationed at Keflavik Air Base in Iceland when he encountered a strange light formation. He spotted the white light suddenly appearing out of the night sky, heading directly towards them against strong headwinds. The three officers noted that the object was incredibly large for the distance it held from their plane. They also noted that when it appeared to be directly above their plane, it stopped in midair and hovered for 6 seconds, even as they altered their course and speed in order to hold their position beneath it. The UFO was so big that the pilots could see it miles away. The pilots were on course and hundreds of miles from shore, according to control. They stood there for a bit, drifting to the right of it. At 10,000 feet, they could see definitely lights and a pattern on the lake when they were approximately 25 to 30 miles away. 
so they couldn't figure out what was going on with the pattern. The base at Argentia was the target destination. So they sent the crew chief back to get Al Jones, the other plane commander. 31 passengers and two VIP crews were on board. A VIP crew member made a report at the time that crew members of an aircraft also came forward. In the cockpit, three crewmen stood behind a radio operator, the navigator, the plane captain and the radio man. The pilots decided to land immediately because it seems like something wasn't right about the whole situation. Suddenly they saw on the water below a yellow haze that appeared to be 15 miles away. The haze rose up to 10,000 feet as measured by their instruments. And he pulled the plane's nose up at near vertical angle in attempt to go below a UFO in imminent danger of colliding with his plane. Unable to see anything outside of the cockpit due to his craft's proximity to his plane, he didn't know which way to turn next. Until suddenly, amidst the confusion and fear of everyone on board, he heard a loud racket. After a while they chased it, and they had a 60 knot headwind, so their ground speed was about 125 knots. The UFO's colors varied depending on its power settings and proximity to observers. When it approached at full speed, its exterior was yellow. As it slowed down, it changed to orange. Further slowing down, it changed to a very red color and then almost purplish red before returning to yellow as it passed over the horizon. It was foggy and misty around the UFO. After having seen a strange object flying above the aircraft, Bethune asked the psychiatrist who was also on board if he had also seen it. And the psychiatrist instantly replied, yes, it was a flying saucer. He then told Bethune that as a psychiatrist he did not believe in such things. Bethune told L not to mention anything to anyone because he will be immediately dismissed by his colleagues and maybe even end up in prison. However, they knew that the story was already released because L had just told Gander Control what he saw. It is important to remember that uh, this story is only one person's account. However, his testimony provides a unique perspective on the government's possibility involvement in UFO cover-ups. If the government is indeed involved in hiding information about UFOs, it raises many questions about why they will do so and what they are trying to keep hidden from the public. What do you think the government's involvement in UFO cover-up says about their transparency? If you were on an airplane and saw a strange object flying above, would you tell anyone? What if the person sitting next to you was a psychiatrist who immediately said it was a flying saucer? Would you believe him? And would you believe them? Comment below. That everything that I have said is true. Astral Citizens is home to unbiased and rare UFO news. Like and share this video and comment below. Click the thanks button below this video to show support. If you want to see more, make sure to follow us. Join the free UFO social network at astralcitizens.com and become a true citizen of the stars.